Now, since I got my parts and I have my upper, I might as well see how it looks before I take it to a gunsmith. Small, my Palmetto Arms complete upper with bolt carrier group, forward assist, and dust cover. Typical MOE olive drab green handguard. I might change this in the future, I'm not sure. So here's the bird cage. We're not allowed to have a bird cage here in New York. No muzzle devices. So I'm gonna put on a thread protector, which is this solid sleeve of aluminum. This does nothing but <laughs> weigh down my barrel, but it looks cool. You gotta put a crush washer here because doesn't line up well if you don't. So that's what it looks like when it's on there with the crush washer. Perfect. Now I have to take it to a gunsmith so he can drill a hole through here and uh, take it about uh, one third into the barrel, put a pin inside and then weld it to make sure that this will never come off. Maybe some red Loctite on the threads too, it'll never come off. So this will satisfy the uh, enforcement people that this is New York State compliant and look at how this looks. Does that not look like an SBR with a silencer on it? totally does but as you can see the original barrel is right there looks good I'm gonna mount the scope now so here on the top of the Picatinny rail you can see that this part here should go on the first notch you could actually move it up and let it hang over if you wanted to but I think with my uh, astigmatism I need to be as close to the thing as possible so I'm going to move it back to the most forward notch and the quick release and quick disconnect lever with a lock on it here you couldn't move it off unless you push this to release and then of course you can tighten this nut here too but um, it's solid on here not this handguard. This handguard actually has some play, but it's just plastic, you know? How's that look, fellas? Does that look pretty good? That looks nice, huh? All I need now is my Aero Precision M4E1 lower, lower parts kit, the uh, stainless steel trigger group. I have my Thorts in stock already. And uh, then we're, we're pretty much done with this build, you know? It's looking really good so far. I do need to get this pin and welded, and then uh, we're good to go. Uh, got my hex mags here. I'm going to load them. Here's my brand new hex mag. One from Primary Arms, and the other three from uh, Optics Planet. Now what I like about um, to do with my mags is that sometimes... If this isn't super smooth or you have a lot of gunpowder buildup, this may get like, it may bind, you know, so that it doesn't cycle your rounds very well. So I like to put a little bit of uh, oil right along the rail under there so that it ni it's nice and smooth. This is just polymer plastic. I'm using some uh, extreme duty gun oil from my friends over at Lucas Oil Outdoor Products. Has like a little needle here. I'm gonna push this down right there. Put a drop right here. Put a drop right along the rails. The contact points that it has that rubs against the housing of the hex mag that will prevent it from being uh, hung up or bind. And it's gonna be a little bit oily for that first round. 
but um, if it allows you to cycle the next round uh, smoothly, that's what I'm going to do. much smoother see not one side is hung up than the other side they're both universally moving because they're both oiled So it's the next day and uh, there it is. Today I'm taking this over to a local gunsmith guy I know who's going to pin and weld this on here for me. And then uh, my buddy came by this morning who shall remain nameless. He brought me some parts to show me what he's building. So you wanted to show me this. I'm gonna unbox it for you right now. This is the Radian AX556 lower receiver. He just got this. It is a work of art, fellas, and it comes just like this. It came like this. He didn't put anything together. Check that out. Now what you're gonna notice is there's a detent spring pin on the very bottom, like that. Right here. You see that? There's a screw here. Let me flip it over for this, with the light. Right there. And so I was like looking at it going, what is that? I don't have that. I've never even seen that. And if you see that there's a, uh, I, don't, I don't think you guys can see it, but there's a thing that sticks out there. I'll, I'll tell you that in a minute. But it came like this. Look at that design. It came ambidextrous on both bolt release and mag release. Here's the left side mag release. Here's the right side mag release, right? And when you do the right side mag release, check out the bolt release too. Look at that. So the um, mag release on this side also acts as a bolt release for the right side. Is that awesome or what? Look at the craftsmanship. And also, there are no roll pins. They're all hex screws, which makes everything super tight. Isn't that gorgeous? That's gorgeous. We won't talk about how much he spent. This is a BCG that I've noticed on the internet, but I didn't know really what it was. It was always super expensive, obviously, so I'm not going to buy it for my budget build, of course. But my bro here, <laughs> we're, going, we're going pretty high end here, okay? This is a Cryptic Coatings BCG. Check this out. I've never seen anything like it. I used to think that a Nickel Boron BCG was like the best, but it's not. Oh, for God's sakes. Look at that. It is so smooth. Excuse my dog, guys. He barks at everything that goes by the house. Is that beautiful or what? 
It is so smooth. The least amount of friction for a BCG that I'm aware of. It's almost like alien technology. Badass. This is his SLR upper. Just wanted to show it to you. I'm gonna mount this on that Radian lower and show you what that uh, spring detent was for. And it's gonna make 100% sense to you when I tell you, when I show you. I'm gonna mount this on the lower now and I'll show you. I'm gonna mount this um, upper to this lower really quick for you, just to show you. And I want you guys to pay attention to how Okay, now over here, <laughs> watch how I have to really push that down. You guys understanding what I'm trying to say now? You really have to push this down to get the uh, takedown pin in there, uh, the pivot pin, because this uh, detent over here, right, the screw that has the detent pin in there, puts upward tension and pressure on the upper from the lower. So therefore, once you have the um, the takedown pin in, right, there's absolutely no play whatsoever between the upper and the lower. So it's just absolutely solid. No play, no rattling, no movement whatsoever due to that feature. I think it's genius to do that, you know? So this is just absolutely solid, isn't it? Gorgeous. And when you put in the uh, P mags, when you put in the P mag, holy cow. When you put in the P mag from Magpul, look at that. You guys notice the design? It matches perfectly. Isn't that fantastic? That is fantastic. I am super jelly. And I won't tell you how much he spent. <laughs> Back from the gunsmith, and he did an awesome job. So here's the barrel shroud. It's got some liquid on here, or oil. Look at that placement there with the crush washer. It's perfect. Just about less than a millimeter below the lip here. And here it is. Drilled a third into the barrel with a pin and then a tack weld and then grind it down. I think it looks wonderful. What do you guys think? I'm just gonna, he's told me that I could just paint this black, but honestly, I wanna keep this visible like that. So if I ever get inspected by any officials, they could just look at it and see that it's um, pin and welded and that this is not going anywhere. Uh, he also red Loctite it. As you guys know, if you use blue Loctite, you could still kind of remove it with a lot of force, but red, lo red Loctite is permanent. You'll never get this barrel off this, uh, you'll never get this shroud off this barrel ever again, at least without destroying the threads completely, you know? And that's basically what they want, is that they want to see that this is a permanent fixture on your barrel and that it won't um, ever come off for you to put other things on. I remounted the scope on here now. Look how badass that looks. Does that look badass, guys, or what? So it looks like an SBR, right? With a silencer on it. But in reality, the end of the barrel is here. The original length of the barrel is there. So it looks like the barrel stops like around here, you know? And you have a silencer on it. So that's the benefits of the barrel shroud, the fake suppressor, is that it makes it look shorter than it actually is, you know? And that's just the look. Tactical. As you can see, measuring from the end of the barrel to the end of the hand, uh, the um, hand guard, exactly 16 inches. So what a lot of people don't know is that uh, under the New York uh, State Safe Act, right, 
yes, we're only restricted to 10 round magazines here in the state of New York. Uh, also, what a lot of people don't know is that you're only allowed to put 10 rounds in here only at an accredited range, a professional range area where you're shooting. If you have your mags loaded with 10, you're in trouble. At home, on your premises, you're only allowed to put seven in your magazines if you're at home. You can only put 10 at a range. It's a lot of things that uh, you didn't know about, but now you know. <laughs> you know, uh, I talked to a bunch of cop friends of mine. They have no idea about what's uh, a legal firearm in New York State or not. I think maybe the New York State troopers are more versed in the legalities of what makes a rifle legal or illegal, you know? So if you ask your, your regular cop, whatever out there, city cop, they have no idea, you know? Nor they tell me, do they care? <laughs> anyway, so uh, thanks for joining me on my, my basic setup install with the parts that I've gotten so far. Uh, this was part four of my AR-15 budget build. Uh, basically, we had my uh, fake suppressor, barrel shroud, thread protector, pin and welded onto my uh, barrel. I've installed my my cool um, rifle scope, three times to nine times uh, combination with a red dot sight, uh, adjustable distance viewing, and I'm just waiting for my Aero Precision M4E1 lower receiver, my trigger group, fire firing trigger group, and lower parts kit, uh, buffer tube assembly, uh, my thorts in stock I have upstairs already. Uh, I've got <laughs> my Tula ammo steel case, 223 rounds, uh, seven only in my house, but I'll shove three more here when I get to a range. And uh, then my build is pretty much complete, you know. Um, I was talking to my friend who shall remain nameless. He told me that I actually, I, if I would have just bought a complete lower, it would have been a little cheaper, you know. But because my firing group is a stainless steel trigger, I wanted the stainless steel trigger. If you bought a complete lower, it wouldn't have that option, you know. So you kind of want to make your gun your own. Not to mention the fact that a complete lower would come with your standard um, stock and pistol grip, which would go to complete waste because I couldn't use it. You know what I mean? Because I'm putting the thorts and stock on there. So you're paying for stuff that you're not going to use. So I, I looked at it that way, you know. But you can do any which way. To build a, uh, your own AR-15, you could just buy a complete upper and a complete lower. Put it together. That's it. There's, there's no fuss, you know. But I kind of wanted to do a more in-depth build by putting the uh, individual trigger group and lower parts kit in <laughs> seemingly thousands of little pieces to put it in. The detents, the roll pins, the, the cotter pins, uh, all that stuff. The springs, you know. I wanted to do that myself to make it feel like a true build, which it is, you know. Um, I'm really happy. I mean, I never expected it to look like that. It looks good. Uh, even you guys in free states will have to admit it's the uh, retro um, MOA look, you know, A2. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining me on uh, today's episode. Be sure to check out the links in all my descriptions for uh, websites to great deals on uh, AR-15 parts so you can build your own. Also, go check out my other channel that is close to 10,000 subscribers, Mowers and Blowers, or go to mowersblowers.com. Also, if you guys like my guns channel, Follow me on Instagram. I just opened an account. I have zero followers. <laughs> Mowers, blowers, guns. Give me a follow, guys. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. See you guys next time on Mowers, Blowers, and Guns. Hey, I'm Henry from Mowers and Blowers. As a YouTuber that deals with small engine equipment on a daily basis, I worry about the harmful effects of the 10% ethanol that's in your unleaded gas from your gas station. Here on the East Coast, as winter nears, I think about storing my summer lawn equipment for the winter. Ethanol absorbs moisture, and what it does is it could rust or corrode and clog up your jets in your carburetor. That's why I use Ethanol Safeguard with stabilizers from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Before you store your machines, 
little bit of Lucas goes a long way. When you're ready to use your machines again, Time on mowers and blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.